Hi, everybody. This is Drew Tomlin with the Association for Middle Level Education, and I'm joined today on this Google Hangout by a, a wonderful author of this article you're checking out at AMLE Magazine called Trading Snow Days for E-Learning Days. All right, so a really novel concept, excellent concept. And the author, of course, is uh, Bobby Thompson. He's the principal of Triton Central Middle School in Fairland, Indiana, and uh, just really excited. I want to talk a little bit more about this concept, how it happened, and how it's going forward. So thank you so much, uh, Bobby, for talking with us today. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Terrific, terrific. So uh, first question, you know, here we are. It's, it's August. Um, clearly not a, a snowbound uh, time of year, um, but why is it important for people to start thinking about the about e-learning days uh, now? Well, one of the things that we learned is that we want to give our teachers ample amount of time to look at our students' data uh, to see uh, what possible areas we might uh, need remediation in or something that could continue on with a lesson that wouldn't be 100% uh, flowing within a lesson, if that, if that makes sense. And so what we want to make sure is that we're able to, on a whim, uh, call a day off of school, but still have school and our students wouldn't uh, be lost without our, our, our teachers because we actually do this in our corporation, uh, K through 12. And so uh, wow. when you start talking primary grades, we want to make sure that we had those lessons planned appropriately for them. So that was one of the main reasons uh, we'd want to start now so you can identify those areas that your students would need the most on those days off. Right, right, which is key with, like you said, creating impactful lessons during those days. It's not just busy work to keep kids occupied, but it's actually targeted with what their needs are. So that's awesome. Um, yep. Clearly, you know, uh, teachers are at the, uh, the center of this successful endeavor. So how did you get teacher buy-in for this e-learning idea? Since, you know, they're the ones who are developing the lessons and, uh, as you say in the article, meeting with uh, students virtually as well. Yeah, uh, we're a one-to-one -one school, and so our teachers really embrace technology here. So when we came to them with this this idea, uh, one, they were excited because they uh, feel much like we did with the snow days, with just being kind of lost instruction days, especially before those uh, state assessments. And so they were excited to have an opportunity to continue on the education at that time. Uh, and then secondly, the, the perk to it was that we said that we could guarantee they were going to get a two-week spring break. Uh, and so they, they really appreciated that their schedule would be uh, exactly what we said it would be on our master calendar. Uh, and again, that was just a byproduct. But uh, the main thing that we got back from our teachers um, from after doing it was that they really enjoyed the interaction with the students. and They felt like it was a true 21st century learning experience that they couldn't duplicate inside the classroom. Right, right. I mean, the, the learning experience shouldn't be dictated by weather and shouldn't be dictated by the, uh, you know, beginning or ending uh, school bell, right? It should be something that they're doing all the time. So um, that, that's awesome. And of course, hey, the two week spring break, that doesn't hurt either. That's right. You know, so uh, so another stakeholder that clearly helped with the success of this is uh, families, you know. So uh, in the article, you talk about polling families. So by polling families about their internet accessibility, clearly you worked with them to make the idea work. So what kind of feedback have you received from families since that time? You know, what's working with them and what, what actually honestly needs to be worked on from your from your perspective? Well, we, we got lots of feedback that we had kept them uh, a part of our process because again, they're one of the main stakeholders. And so um, just some of the feedback we got right away was that they felt like um, our first e-learning day, which was over a year ago now, was too much work. Uh, for our students and uh, you know we want to make sure that we gave you know six and a half hours worth of instruction to our students like they would get at school and so we want to make sure that was a, a meaningful learning day for them so we listened to that and we modified a few things especially uh, looking at special needs and some of those that may take a little bit longer uh, so that we make sure that we're meeting all the needs there uh, our our feedback um, from our out of district students uh, because we have students that transfer into our schools was that they would rather have e-learning days than two-hour delay days. They felt like those days were much more meaningful to their students uh, right. as far as learning goes. Uh, and so uh, that was great feedback to get. Um, as far as internet accessibility, you know, we really worked with our students and we, um, we, we had different platforms for them to do it. We had them preload the, the information on their devices well ahead of time. Uh, students that didn't know if they would have uh, accessibility to their machines, depending on the caregiver of that day, we made sure they had paper packets to take with them, and they just kind of held right. on to those until those days. So we did a lot of different avenues to do that, and honestly, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive um, and, and great feedback for us. And so we didn't find any um, 
issues with the, the students not being able to do the work on those days off. And, and if a student did, obviously they weren't penalized for that. We, we created time for them uh, before and after school uh, and other ways to and provided transportation so that we could make sure that those that time was made up with them. So that's that's uh, great what a great i mean obviously very responsive um and very um intuitive um effort here i mean you're clearly listening to the family's voices and what works and yeah when they come back and say hey this is too much work um you didn't just say well tough luck to you <laughs> we're gonna stay rigorous um but instead you, you were flexible with that so that's a, a truly responsive school so congratulations on that uh another thing you know you mentioned that the in terms of the benefit to students you you mentioned that e-learning days help students communicate and collaborate from a distance um, more effectively. So what other benefits did you see, um, you know, in achievement or in any other way that you saw students benefit? We, we, we learned, I think, just as much as the students did uh, by practicing these days. Uh, one was that um, we, we do practice these before we actually call a day. Um, so when the weather's still really nice outside, we, we let our kids come in and we practice one of these days in their pajamas and stuff. And, and so it was really interesting to see the, the correspondence, you know, via email. Uh, once, you know, a teacher says, okay, I'm, I'm here, but I'm not really here. And so, uh, you know, we would get, you know, emails saying, hey, what's this word? Or what is this? And, you know, so the teacher would have to explain, I'm not standing next to you, so you're going to have to explain to me what that word is. And so, you know, via electronic communication, we take a lot of things for granted. And so our students really had to think about what they were doing and how they were effectively communicating with that. And so um, that was a, a really neat byproduct of it. Um, we had students um, going above and beyond and creating, you know, Google Hangouts and, and other areas uh, so oh, they wow. could collaborate with their own peers about, um, you know, and work on different things. Uh, and so that created an avenue we hadn't really thought our students were going above and beyond. And so um, just really, really impressed with, with the, the depth of, of what our students were able to do with truly 21st century skills. And, and, you know, communication is, you know, one that we hear all the time from the workforce uh, that they really want us right. to work on. Um, our students had a true telecommuting experience. And, you know, if you look down uh, the road into the future, that may be something that our students are doing more and more of. And so uh, we, we felt like, you know, if our students were able to start that in elementary school and do that all the way through high school is that, you know, that would be a definite advantage for them going into the post-secondary world or, or business world. So um, but those were all some really, really neat things that came out of it that we really didn't expect. Um, and then the, the, the last thing that I was really impressed with is since you know, we do look at a lot of data and try to be a data-driven school is that um, our students' submittal rate for actual work done those days is much, much higher than on a normal day. Uh, and our oh, teachers wow. were really impressed with that too. And so, um, and then the last trend that we saw was interesting to us is that our earlier students, we're, we're a five through eight building um, mm -hmm. here at Triton Central Middle School and our fifth graders were starting school much, much earlier about uh, a little after six o'clock, uh, seven o'clock range a.m. Uh, and then our seventh and eighth grade students seem to be logging in about 10, 30, 11 o'clock a.m. And so uh, we found that very interesting. They want to work later into the day where our elementary students seem to be wanting to be getting done much quicker with that. So those were just some of the things that we saw that we found very, very interesting. So. Right. But obviously, you know, they wouldn't have that kind of flexibility with unless you had those different options for them. You know, that, that's what's really and I'm glad that you mentioned like this 21st century skills and uh, the workplace stuff because as you were talking, I thought, gosh, this is this is college and career readiness. This is what everyone talks about, you know, giving kids practice to collaborate, communicate, and create all that all that kind of great stuff. So um, once again, I, you know, I hope people who are reading this article and listening to this interview uh, reach out to you because I think this is really something that uh, should be in place at all schools and school systems. Um, all right, so I'm going to take you on a metaphorical journey, Bobby, if you're ready for it. What do you think? Sure, let's go for it. Ready? All right, okay, here we go. So if e-learning days were a food for a middle-level education, what kind of food would they be and why? Oh, that's a great question. Mm. Uh, I don't know about a, spe a specific food, but I would say maybe um, thinking about food science a little bit, I, I would think that they're protein. Um, and so I guess chicken might be a good or a food to relate to that um, okay. because I feel like they're a, a building block um, with that. So as protein as a building block uh, is that we yeah. want to make sure that we are maximizing our learning uh, before uh, the state assessments. Uh, during these days, we, we wanted them to be quality days. And so uh, we wanted to build on skills that we needed, um, some areas to, to focus on with, you know, with previous um, testing data or our students' uh, formative assessment data. So uh, with using these days to, to build on those skills, I would say that they're a protein. And so we felt like we were able to carry on uh, with our normal functions um, 
much more fluidly uh, with these e-learning days rather than taking a break or a two or three day break and then trying to come back and pick that up and, and then watching the weather again with maybe two hour delays, you know, uh, being right. in a rural area, the weather can really dictate and really change your schedule quite a bit, but we were able to just continue on with our normal functions, so to say, with, with that. And so a protein is a very, very, very big piece of that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, yeah, protein, like you said, building blocks, that's a, a perfect uh, a metaphor, you know, like I, I think about, you know, a piece of chicken, that is the, the piece that you have in the middle of the plate, and then you have the side dishes around it. Um, but without that chicken, you, you really don't have a complete meal. So you're delivering a complete edu educational meal for, for all these kids, Bobby, goodness gracious, well done. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for the, the kind words. Hey, hey, well, thank you for this excellent content and uh, for the excellent conversation. Appreciate you taking some time out of your uh, summer to talk with us a little bit more. Thank you, Drew. I really appreciate the opportunity, too. Excellent. And of course, hey, thank you, AMLE Magazine readers, for checking out the article and checking out this interview uh, here at AMLE. We will help you reach every student, grow professionally, and create great schools. Thanks again, Bobby. Thank you.